Um, my name is Angie, and I live in, lived in Miguelia, California. I'm a jewelry designer, uh, an artist, and um, self-proclaimed repurposer. Um, I find things that are just sort of interesting. Um, some people might think is is garbage, you know, like an, an old clock or watch that doesn't work anymore. And so I take it apart. I find the gears, um, the little springs, pieces of things, and I repurpose them into kind of interesting pieces of jewelry. I mean, I find rocks with faces on them. I name them and sell them within eight minutes on my Etsy shop. So, <laughs> yeah. It was just pure um, luck that I saw it when I did. I was up early that morning and I did what I always do. I get my cup of coffee and I go to the big window here at the house and, and look out and it was beautiful. I mean, the sky was as bright as blue as it is right now. And then I sort of looked to the left and through these trees, it sort of had an orange glow and it caught my interest because it's like that sunrise right there but it was late enough that it wouldn't have been at the horizon anymore. So it, I kind of took extra interest to it and, and walked out and didn't, there was no smell of smoke. There was no breeze. Um, the sky up above was bright blue, but there was this glow. And um, so I walked around and I could see through the trees, which were much thicker than they are now, the kind of a cloud, a plume of, something that looked like a cloud, but it was the wrong color just to be a cloud. And then I looked back and, and I took another picture and it was eight minutes later and everyone was running and screaming for their lives. It had moved in eight minutes from the other side of the ridge to right at the edge of uh, where we were standing there. So I hit the garage door opener and it was right here and it went up and then right at that time, the electricity was killed. And, but there was enough space for me to get my car under the open garage door. And got out and um, threw in the dog and grabbed my phone charger, contemplated a couple other things and then kind of told myself after doing this two times before that um, I'd be back in two or three hours. I remember hitting the garage door button because when I'd leave, I always shut it and I hit it and it's like, oh yeah, it's not going down anymore, which that opener still is on the visor in my car. I haven't been able to take that down yet. And um, evacuated and got out to the, the main road out, Skyway, and the people were not letting people in. There was nowhere to go to get in. Everyone was frantic, and so I remembered that my dad had taught me um, the back High Lakes roads, the dirt roads, and hunting and fishing and stuff at the High Lakes past Sterling City and Inskip. So I just um, thought that that's the way I needed to go because I could see the bottleneck happening here in Megalia. And so I turned left, and everybody was happy to let me in to go left. And I went left and I went up until I hit a, a dirt road that I recognized and, and that's, I put it in four wheel drive and that's how I got out. Still thinking that I was gonna be back later that evening or tomorrow morning. Um, it's home. I, I finally um, reached a place in my life where I had a, a home that was paid for, free and clear. I was able to do my rock hunting and adventures and hiking and it was it was home. You know, people complain about the red dirt or the snow or the poison oak and things and I wouldn't know it any other way. It was it's it's home. Even though I was born in Chico, um, once I was here Back in junior high, this was where I knew I would always come back to and it'd be home. The memories, I think, all of the memories, going back to, you know, 13 years old, um, 
the, the landmarks, the history of this town. That, I mean, there, what's a quarter mile that direction is the, the largest gold nugget that was ever found in the whole world sort of thing. Um, pioneer days, um, the father of my children. And it, yeah, it's home. Having um, not too long ago lost my, my dad too, built a beautiful house for us as we were kids for our family home. And I don't know, it's just, you know, when you're a really young child, you don't, you have memories of learning how to ride a bike or, you know, one time you really got in trouble or something, but the, the memories that really start to, to form who you are are at the age that I moved up here. And it just gets in your blood and this is, this is who you are. Coming home, that's easy. Coming home and um, doing something different in a way of what I construct. I've got two ideas we've talked about. Um, an A-frame, not that we get that much snow anymore, but um, an A-frame has always kind of been my, my dream little playhouse thing. And now that this is cleared and I'm kind of more up on the hill, um, maybe an A-frame. And then I've, much to my mother's demise, have considered Connex houses and doing something real artistic with that and it would be much more friendly in a fire. So I'm looking forward to just exploring something that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to before. The ones that I know, immediate neighbors are not, they've decided not to come back. And the familiar sounds and smells, um, if at night you would hear a, the road, a dog bark, you knew whose dog, and depending on the bark, you knew if it was, you know, there's a mountain lion in the neighborhood or the parents, mom and dad, just got home and they were excited. Just the familiar stuff. Um, I know that the, the male lady that I had um, has since moved away and, and not coming back. And no one here that I know is. So it's, it's what's familiar is going to be hard to kind of show the new neighbors the ropes in the neighborhood. <laughs> There's no place like home and doesn't always have to look the same, but who's to say it can't be better, you know? So come home, just come home and give it a chance and then make your decision is what I would say to people that have been here before. New people, I would say you're, you're gonna miss out if you don't, try it because it, if oleanders can go through 2,800 degrees and come back and trees are starting to turn green again and the trees that you wanted to get rid of will be gone and it's, it's a perfect location. It's close to lakes and fishing and the people up here are, um, they were humble people and even more so now. So I, th I think you'd, you'd be sorry if you didn't at least try it. <laughs>